This is an astrometry log, September 1st, 2008. You may have noticed that I removed the chrono-differentiated uh, model video, uh, for those of you that recall that. And in other words, time-differentiated movement, movement that is caused by the movement of matter through time rather than the movement of matter through space relative to other objects. Now, I was really reticent to um, to label this this because it's going to create a sort of misnomer because the astrometric notion about what time is the chrono part is very different than our modern notion about what time is and so I really wanted a better word but chronocentric chronocentric model is the one that I would propose to follow the heliocentric model and so now we uh, we would see in the progression geocentric um, heliocentric and then chronocentric. Now chronocentric is time relative. It's relative to time itself. Uh, respecting the fact that everything is in motion, that's the big problem in astrometry is where is everything actually moving and when? Um, because the nature of light makes the problem uh, incredibly difficult. And so um, to calculate where something was when we see it is very difficult and so knowing where it is in the moment theoretically is a sort of well it's an impossible math problem even for our best computers the big differentiating factor and this factor is akin to the illusion that the earth is is flat I mean in its uh, magnitude in its magnitude of the potential weight it has on our interpretation of our solar system, of our planet. The, the weight is as heavy as the difference between the flat Earth and the spherical Earth model. Um, crossed, like multiplied, uh, by the geocentric heliocentric model, uh, its shift. And so this shift is an even more tumultuous shift that we're going through here. And I think we have to do it. I think it would be really, really uh, unwise for us not to put this into the um, into the mainstream, considering some of the challenges that we face um, in understanding how we're moving through the universe and, and working with what we have to work with. The big shift in astrotometry, the the, the things that shift, those two things that shift about the, the structure and the movement are based on what we've discovered about the nature of matter and energy. Um, our Newtonian concept of matter is that matter is continuous and persists through time. But we know that matter doesn't persist through time and it sort of skips through time. There's a sort of waveform that's associated with it that uh, uh, is, is asserted to be a probability in the Heisenberg uncertainty um, for lack of a more complete understanding about the nature of those particles or waves. And astrometry resolves this as an illusion, um, as an illusion of the way things move through time. In other words, there's an illusion involved with the nature of the spin of the spheres, the apparent motion of the spheres, that is based on that sort of skipping. That skipping through time is what causes the spin. And the um, the displacement from one from one place to another um, is that, that appears on the level of the cosmic level. In other words, uh, in astrometry, in the astrotome. And so, the the big factor, the big difference, is that we don't know how far it moves in a moment. And so there's this there's this uh, paradox. There's another paradox. I haven't really named it yet, but it resolves to this concept of hypertime because in between the times, in between the the moment when matter is there and when it isn't, anything that would be detecting it doesn't, couldn't, not possibly detect it. And so, in the higher version of astrometry, when I get into this later, you'll find out that that movement is uh, happens in stages. That there's there's movements underneath of that movement from moment to moment that compose what we perceive as the physical movement. And so there's movement through time and there's movement through hyper time. Now the movement through hyper time is imperceptible in our time except for this, uh, this cosmic movement that we perceive 
as the rotation of the of the Earth and um, the manifestation of the planets and stars and uh, the spheres in the heavens. Now, in astrotometry, those spheres are not continuous in their physical existence. They are, they're popping in and out of existence just like the Earth is. And so they're being, they're being predicated. That's the word I use um, and the technical term on the website. There's a, what call, I call temporal predication that has to do with the underlying energy forms that are the actual source of the movement. And so there's, this, there's another source of the movement that underlies the source that we see. And this source, the, the most evident um, clue to the nature of this source is the light that we see emanating from the heavens and the nature of that light. Um, the, the common notion is that that light is moving. And in astrotometry, there's two types of movement. And in astrotometry, the, the perception of that light is attached, is, is inseparable from the movement through hypertime. And so that light cone, that photon that shines out in every direction, the reason it has that mysterious property is because of the nature of the thing that observes it. That light, that distant light, that infinite light, is actually a, a point over which the space-time folds into the hypertime. And so there's a hypertime wavelength that is involved with the nature of the photon that is the actual mechanism that moves things through space. This is better understood as a separate phenomenon for motion. This is, this is better understood as a different type of motion, this chrono-differentiated motion. And it can be abstracted into the uh, reference of the, the vibration of molecules, the molecular vibration that we perceive comes out of that movement. It's a symptom of that movement. The reason the movement appears um, smooth, that we don't see the jerking through time, is because we don't recognize the pl place in between. It's kind of like the movie projector that has that, that part in between the frame that we never see because it's jerking so quickly that our perception can't, can't perceive it. But this is even more smooth because it's actually the stuff that we're made of that is moving. It's actually the composition of our material structure that is moving through hypertime from one space-time to another that gives us this illusion. And so that's the primary, that's the primary movement in astrotometry. That's the primary shift in astrotometry that we um, that I think we need to be considering um, as a possible explanation for what is happening uh, with the movement of our cosmos.